Yeah, when the bolt when the bolt was down. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, hey Nick, you wanna lower this for us? Sure. Slow. Slow. So like with all of our restored trucks, this truck is also getting the power brake conversion because honestly, I wouldn't really consider it safe with a single master cylinder. So here is our jig setup. We're modifying the fender just like it was done in 1968 for power brake. So you can see here is an original fender and that's the cutout for the power brakes that Land Rover did from the factory. And here's our jig that we have to do the exact same cutout, same profile, everything. It, you would be hard pressed to say that this was not a factory uh, modification on this on this particular fender. So Alan's just grabbing some clamps and he's gonna go ahead and modify that lip. And that way it'll bolt right on when we're ready to, to get the fender onto the bulkhead. All right, so we have our transmission on the sling, ready to go in. Mike's just bringing it up now to mate it to the engine. And this is a fully rebuilt series three transmission. So originally the four speeds were not, did not have first and second synchronized. So this has all four gears synchronized. So we got it rolling. We have the front axle built out. It's sitting on its rubber. You can see the Michelin XEL tires look really good on the tubeless five and a half inch wheels. We got the sniper going on here and you can see it's bolted right up to the series intake manifold here. We have a series ball pivot. The O2 sensor bung is welded in there. We have the British, the starter from British starters installed. We have the disc brakes installed. On the front, we have the parabolic springs. We have the Odyssey battery, which is pretty much the best battery out there, the best AGM battery out there right now. Parking brake is in place. Brake lines are plumbed. And you can see back here we have the um, original bumperettes and airlift rings all left in their original galvanizing. Um, back here we have, instead of a two inch receiver hitch, I actually just went with a pintle hitch with a two inch ball so I could tow a small trailer and it still looks sort of correct for the vehicle. And the next thing that we're gonna do is drop the bulkhead on it. So the bulkhead needed um, a good amount of modification to make it work because this is actually an aftermarket bulkhead and we had to do a few modifications to it. So we actually had to weld in these lips for the vent flaps to seal against here. We had to move these vent flap brackets up. We had to actually lengthen the bottom of the bulkhead here. This was too short. We had to weld up a couple holes that were not supposed to be there. And we actually had to extend this transmission tunnel um, piece here outwards. So it was um, about an inch too short down at the bottom. But it seems like this aftermarket bulkhead is going to work great. And the best thing about this is it's all new metal and it's galvanized. So for any of the small inconsistencies that aren't quite original on it, I think that it makes up for that in the fact that it's not gonna rust as readily as a ungalvanized bulkhead. So we're gonna go ahead and just touch up some of the paint on this and then we're gonna drop it on. Go. 
cockpit is officially on. Now is the fun part of fitting out the components that make up the bulkhead to the bulkhead and getting the, uh, the vehicle assembled. So Mike's working on the brakes here. He's getting the brake line in and Nick's working on the lower cover for the, the bulkhead there. And Alan's just finishing up one quick thing on the transmission. So we're moving along pretty nicely on this project and hopefully by the end of the day we'll have everything plumbed and have the steering column in it. We're at the phase of the project now where we need to get the doors aligned because that can only be done while the bulkhead and tub are still flexible. So you can see we're using ratchet straps to kind of bring up the front of the bulkhead a little bit. Um, we've set this door gap here first because that's kind of a non-negotiable. We want to set that before we do anything. We want to lock that in, get it as, as close as possible. And of course, these door gaps aren't perfect from the factory. And I'll actually show you an original truck to show you what the door gaps looked like back in the 1960s. Okay, so here is an original truck that has all of its original body panels, has it's on its original frame, has the original bulkhead. It has 16,000 original miles, so it's a pretty untouched truck. And let's just take a look at the door gaps on this one. So they're pretty even down there, but they taper up here and it gets really tight here. So this is, they, they have their door gaps a little tighter than, than I would ever do because I would be afraid of the paint chipping right here. So we, we go back a little bit. This is pretty tight here. And then it actually, it's a tapered gap on the windshield here. So this tapers. So pretty good, but again, not perfect. Let's look at the, the fender fit. Okay, so fender fit. So it's actually out at the top here a little bit. So it's the top of the fenders a little proud of the bulkhead but the most important thing the fender is always flush with the bottom of the bulkhead here that is a non-negotiable and let's look at the hood gap so hood it's a little wider on the back and kind of tapers to the front let's look at this side this side's a little bit more even this fender fit is actually better than the other side and let's look at the door gap. Okay, this door gap is, is wider here and, oh, it's very wide up here. Okay, so keep in mind that these doors have probably sagged a little bit because you can see this is down a little bit here, but not really, not much. So, I mean, this is probably pretty close to what a factory Land Rover door gap would have looked like in 1965. A Little bit of sagging, if you imagine that up a little bit. So these are pretty tight door gaps. I wouldn't do these so tight because I would be afraid of the paint contacting here as the door hinge, uh, hinge pins sag. So we're pretty happy with that. We're just bringing up the back of the door using these ratchet straps here to get this aligned with the tub, which we're pretty close. Actually, I think we're there. What do you think, Alan? Does that look good? Yeah, we're here. We're there. Good, yeah, so see, we have some shims between the bulkhead and the frame and that's what kind of sets the door gaps and also allows us to bring this up or down depending on if we remove or add shims so we think we're i think we're we're there so the, the good thing about getting the door gaps set this way once they're locked in nothing's going to change we could build out the whole rest of the truck and not have gaps that are tapered or even I've seen uh, door tops that hit the windshield frame and there's not much you could do about that without taking it all back apart and getting everything loose um, and, and readjusting, so basically starting over from scratch. So we're locking in the tub now, we're bolting that down. The, uh, the ratchet straps will come off once we bolt all of this down. So we're gonna add shims here, so these shims um, We'll go in, we'll bolt the support to the bulkhead here, and then we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll bolt this down, we'll lock all that in. These holes are slotted here, so we'll tighten all those up. And then that bulkhead's not going anywhere, uh, especially after we get the clamp in 
or the steering column. Uh, we want to just put everything on that will hold this bulkhead in this position now. And then once that's done, that's that's the turning point in the project. We can get the fenders on, we can get the roof on. Um, also, we can put the gas tank in because we can't put the gas tank in until the tub is aligned because you can't get to the bolts on the bottom of the tub. So it's a, it's a big turning point for the project and I'm really happy with how it's coming out. I'm getting really excited.